Today we have the fourth generation of Ryzen CPUs announced from AMD and I think this will easily be the biggest hit to Intel so far. As you can probably tell, I'm pretty excited because these are looking like a seriously compelling uh, CPU from especially an enthusiast point of view, especially if you want the most gaming performance that you can possibly get from your gaming machine. These are looking seriously, seriously good. But before we get into that, let's just kind of recap where we're at at this point and how AMD got here in the first place. So when the first generation of Ryzen CPUs launched at the beginning of 2017, they honestly weren't that great. Motherboard BIOSes were buggy, Windows stability was unpredictable, and achieving memory speeds above 3000 megahertz was extremely rare, at least at launch. However, it's this highly scalable CCX and core design, which got AMD to where it is right now. Second generation fixed most of the memory speed and BIOS issues, but gaming performance was still a decent way behind Intel. Third generation though, that's where AMD really demonstrated the true scalability of the Zen CCX design, slapping up to 16 cores on a consumer desktop processor with the 3950X and their new chiplet layout. And now with fourth gen, AMD are claiming a 19% bump in instruction per clock performance over third gen with gaming performance that for the first time ever is consistently faster than Intel over a range of titles. And we're not just talking a couple of percent in a few AMD cherry pick titles, 4th Gen Ryzen is looking like an absolute beast when it comes to gaming, and that is seriously concerning for Intel because that was kind of their last leg to stand on in the majority of the consumer desktop CPU market. Now, Zen 3 will still be on the 7 nanometer manufacturing process as last gen, but it's important not to get too caught up with that, as AMD are calling this their greatest architectural update since Ryzen first launched. One of the biggest changes for Zen 3 is a unified 8 core CCX, with each of the cores getting full access to the level 3 cache within the CPU die. And we've seen how important this can be with the quad core Ryzen 3300X versus the 3100, with substantial improvements when it comes to gaming. And despite this being 4th gen, AMD have opted not to call these 4000 series processors because that would clash with their 4000 series laptop processors, so it's a good idea for them to start fresh in my opinion and avoid further confusion. So here are the big four that will be on shelves November 5th. At the top of the stack we have the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen 9 5950X with a boost clock of up to 4.9 gigahertz, 72 megabytes of total L2 and L3 cache, and a 105 watt TDP. AMD have claimed not to have touched the socket power and TDP here, so with that in mind, power and thermals should be right in line with their previous 105 watt parts like the 3950X, and that's very good news. Then a step down from that, we have the 5900X, 12 cores with a boost clock of up to 4.8 gigahertz with the same TDP and socket power as the 5950X. Then for a high-end gaming slash creator focused processor, we have the Ryzen 7 8 core 5800X, a $450 US processor, which will likely be the most popular choice for a high-end gaming machine. And lastly, we have the six core gaming focused processor processor the 5600X. Important note, there are no non-X parts here. There's no Ryzen 5 5600, there's no Ryzen 7 5700, and typically you would see those parts offer better value at a barely lower clock speed. At least that's what we've seen with first, second, and third gen. But here with fourth gen, there is absolutely nothing. Whether those will come in the future, I'm pretty confident that they eventually will because there is definitely some room in the product stack for them. But when that will be, we just don't know. And it's an important note because these processors are not cheap and it seems like AMD are just completely deviating away from the value focused approach that they had with their previous CPUs. So $300 for a Ryzen 5 5600X, you know, $300 for a six core processor, that's not cheap. That's actually more expensive than what you'd pay for a 10600K. And yeah, they just seem to be really deviating away from this value focused approach. And it does seem that they're really confident in the overall and outright performance of these new fourth gen CPUs. One thing that I do want to mention is the timing is really impeccable for these new fourth gen CPUs. Your fresh CPUs launching right after the RTX 3080, the 3090 and 3070. 
there are so many people who are looking to build a fresh new gaming PC from the ground up with those RTX 30 series GPUs. And you can bet that they're gonna be looking for these Zen 3 processors as well. And these are people who are just plain and simply gamers. They don't follow a bunch of tech channels on YouTube or kind of get really sucked into the hype and fanboyism. These are people who are looking to make a nice thick upgrade to their PC and forget about the PC hardware industry for another three to four years. And that is absolutely catastrophic for Intel. Now I want to bring some attention to the head-to-head -head single threaded Cinebench run between the Intel 10900K and the upcoming Ryzen 5900X. Typically when you see this kind of demonstration at a product announcement, the product that it's being compared to is usually not given ideal circumstances. Usually there's some handicapping going on, whether that's a slower memory kit, limited cooling, or a lower power target. But I went back and checked my own results for the 10900K and they're actually right in line with what AMD is showing here. In fact, AMD is showing a very optimistic single threaded performance for the 10900K, consider it best case, and still the 5900X absolutely stomps it when it comes to single threaded performance in this workload. Now this is just Maxon Cinema 4D, but gains of this size will definitely reflect extremely positively when it comes to gaming as well. And this is what most of us have been waiting to see. AMD are claiming that the 12 core 5900X can beat the current fastest gaming processor on the market, Intel's i9 10900K. That's while costing less and offering an additional two cores for other workloads. With that in mind, even if it ties the 10900K, that would still be a huge win for AMD. Of course, you'll want to wait for independent testing and reviews. Do make sure to subscribe for that, but I definitely wouldn't call these cherry-picked AMD titles. It's also important to note that although these are only a few percentage points above the 10900K, you can expect a massive increase over third gen Ryzen, with average gaming performance looking like an average boost of around 20%. This is also compared to not just any third gen Ryzen part, but the fastest in their entire lineup, the 3900 XT. When it comes to motherboards, there's already support for 500 series chipsets such as B550 and X570. You'll just need to download the existing Agiza 1080 version before installing your new 5000 series CPU, and then consider updating it again just after launch to get the best performance possible. As for 400 series boards, B450, X470, you'll just have to wait around for an update expected at the beginning of next year. That's really unfortunate because it's two months after the CPU's launch, so if you're looking for a 500 series board now, I will leave some links down below that can be updated with a 4th gen chip installed. And lastly, they did show an extremely quick teaser of their next gen GPUs with capable 4K gaming performance, but they really didn't show much, so there's not much to mention here. Honestly, I do think it's going to be incredibly hard to beat what Nvidia have done with the RTX 3080, but we will just have to wait and see. Overall, it does look like AMD have just dropped an atomic nuke on Intel because with the 10600K and the 10900K, you could kind of argue if you were building a purely focused gaming rig that those processes did make sense. But with 4th gen Ryzen, that just doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And I really can't wait to test these out and see if that actually is the case. I would love to know your thoughts on this down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and do subscribe for the reviews coming up soon. And I'll see you all in the next one.